Welcome to this side event ahead of the ninth session of the meeting of the parties to the Water Convention. Bienvenue à tous dans cette session organisée en amont de la réunion des parties à la Convention sur l'eau. Pour nos participants francophones, veuillez noter que l'interprétation en français est disponible pour cette réunion. Dans la barre de contrôle en bas de votre fenêtre Zoom, vous pouvez sélectionner votre langue préférée. My name is Julian Rue. I am a senior network specialist at GWP Global Secretariat. The side event will explore how the water, food, energy ecosystems contributes to advancing transboundary cooperation and sustainable natural resources management. The WEF Nexus has really risen to prominence as a key framework for achieving food, water, energy security, whilst consoling environmental needs in the past 10 years. Thanks to the mobilization of UNDC and other key partners, the Nexus has been particularly explored as a tool to support and enhance transboundary cooperation in shared ba basins. It is fitting to take the time today to learn from experience of actors and practitioners what has worked well, what benefits to a WEF Nexus approach in terms of cross-border collaboration, what could be improved. We are glad to have this discussion with all of you today to learn together and exchange. And I'm now handing over to my colleague Dimitris for introducing the session. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Dimitris Folitos. I'm uh, the Regional Deputy Coordinator for Global Water Parties in Ukraine, as well as the um, Co-Focal Point for Transboundary Water Resources, GWP. Uh, GWP has been working um, with uh, the Nexus approach uh, for uh, the past five, six years, five, six years. Allow me to share my screen while I'm speaking. And here we are. And uh, as uh, Julien mentioned, the uh, Water Food Energy Ecosystem Nexus has been promoted by the UNEC Water Convention as means to um, facilitate transboundary cooperation. Ms. Anuka Liponen should be here today with us, but uh, she has changed his post. He has been the main vehicle the past year to be behind this. Uh, it's, it's good to have uh, Ms. Lucia de Strasse representing the UNEC Water Convention and the work that um, he's doing in uh, the field of Nexus. Lucia will be telling us some, some words on this um, in, um, in this regard. Um, the water food energy ecosystem nexus has been seen by many as a clearinghouse to what uh, concerns not transboundary integrated natural resources management, uh, where there are approaches that take into consideration mainly look to the ecosystems as the entry point to do uh, to achieve integrated water resource management, the next approach. Uh, focus on what is deemed the absolute necessary when it comes to socioeconomic development and well being, as well as environmental well being, the weather, food, and energy. Um, the uh, so called WEFE is using um, policy dialogues, is using uh, multi stakeholder uh, processes along with uh, numerical modeling to identify those trade-offs that will um, function as an entry point to, to, uh, to, to start working on integrated water resource management. You will be, um, you will be uh, hearing more from our practitioners that uh, will be speaking today. This specific event uh, will use the stories for those practitioners and the panel discussion as a means to identify what kind of potentials and whether they are potentially using the weather, water, food, energy, ecosystem, next approach to operationalize solutions for advanced boundary cooperation, sustainable natural resources management. What is the added value of the next assessments in transboundary water resource management context? That's the first of the questions that we hope that today will be addressed through the panel discussion and the uh, and the stories that we will be hearing. Can the Nexus approach lead to initiation of, or enhancement of cooperation by identifying the transmother issues, informal trade-offs, or the benefits of, co of cooperation, or by identifying the solutions and uh, investments that trust, address the causes of those transmother issues and generate, generate multiple benefits? And to what extent it is possible to use the above as entry points for initiating or enhancing cooperation? 
Uh, ground rules, please make sure you remain muted when not speaking. Please rename how you appear on Zoom using the name institution. Participants may use the chat write comments and uh, as you may have already understood, the meeting is being recorded. The structure of the event after this uh, welcome and introductory session, we're gonna have Mrs. Testrasse uh, say a few words, words about the World Convention and the work in Nexus and how this promotes transboundary cooperation or is used as Minister of the World to promote transboundary cooperation. We'll be hearing a keynote address by Mr. Abderrahim Geremehabit, Executive Secretary of the Niger Beijing Authority. Uh, we're going to have them the storytelling, the storytelling session um, after uh, our, uh, our colleagues pitching their interventions, their presentations. We're going to break uh, into, into groups. Uh, there's going to be a storytelling for 10 minutes and discussion for 15 minutes. We'll, we'll come back in uh, plenary for reflections and feedback, and then we're going to have a final discussion with the presenters participating in this panel discussion. And uh, without delaying more, I would like to uh, ask Ms. Lucia de Strasse to say a few words about the Nexus work uh, in the framework of UNIC Water Convention. Lucia, please. Thank you, Dimitris. And thank you, GWP MED, for organizing this side event and inviting me to say a few, few welcoming words. Uh, so on behalf of the Water Convention Secretariat, Welcome to this side event, and hopefully I will see a lot of you also at the meeting of the party uh, this week. Uh, I just want to spend uh, some words to say why the Nexus work is important for the Water Convention. Um, to some extent, this is uh, uh, this is evident already from what uh, Dimitris already said. Um, as you know, the Water Convention supports transboundary cooperation in the UNEC region and all across the globe uh, more recently. Um, and all, all around the world, trade-offs and impacts are very visible in, uh, um, in transboundary context. Usually, um, the next is about large water demands coming from energy and agricultural developments that need to be reconciled. So this is a big challenge for water managers and policymakers to ensure that all of these different needs are uh, respected together with environmental needs. Uh, so this is this is why already eight years ago uh, the Water Convention started working on the Nexus, initially by carrying out um, Nexus assessments to understand what the main problems are and how they're interlinked in transboundary contexts, and then uh, more recently working more uh, more and more on the so-called the Water um, sorry uh, Nexus solutions and Nexus investments. Um, the, the reason for, for this evolution is that the Nexus work should not just be technical. Um, we, uh, you will, those, those of you who will attend the MOP will see uh, the second reporting uh, on the SDG indicator 652 uh, that the UNEC carried out with UNESCO that shows clearly that we are not on track to see uh, IWRM, uh, Integrated Water Resource Management and Transboundary Basins. Um, and at the same time, um, you will also see the launch of the publication Solutions and Investments in the WEF and Nexus, which includes a synthesis of experiences from policymakers and practitioners from around the world, all trying to tackle these issues in transboundary basins. Uh, what's the link between these two? Um, well, we hope that the Nexus publication uh, will give some insights and possible directions to enable this Nexus cooperation in practice, because the thing is, a cross-sectoral dialogue could greatly improve the current outlook of transboundary cooperation, precisely by unlocking cooperation where it is stuck, which means on projects, on planning, and on strategies. So the publication I just mentioned already addresses a bit uh, the, the questions uh, up for discussion today on what are the benefits of cooperation, what solutions and investments uh, can, can this type of dialogue uh, bring up. Um, and, um, and, and, and on this, I'd like to stress one point that, the, um, that emerged from this um, survey that we uh, carried out in 2020, that is at the basis of this uh, Nexus Solution <coughs> publication, which is the fact that it's, it's clear, or at least it seems clear that by increasing the efficiency of natural resource uses, Nexus Solutions can provide benefits and provide economic benefits and savings, win-win solutions and so on. It can provide non-economic benefits 
peace and stability, for example. For example. However, we are seeing a lack of specificity and the lack of evaluation of these benefits, and this may prevent the development of, pro of concrete cross-sector projects. So I hope that the discussion today will touch upon this. Um, also taking into account that in transboundary basins, nexus investments, investments in general are often associated with high risks. So cross-sector arrangements should in, in, in principle um, uh, find uh, solutions in terms of shared benefits that increase the uh, prospect for uh, funding opportunities also. So um, let me also say that the Nexus activities as part of the uh, program of work, the future program of work of, um, of the Water Convention will link more and more also with other areas of work, namely uh, climate adaptation, because the Nexus approach should help us um, implementing Nexus uh, mitigation and Nexus, uh, sorry, climate adaptation and climate mitigation at the same time in a more coordinated manner and also on financing transboundary cooperation because we hope that this all of this cross-sectoral dialogue also helps us to leverage more um, more uh, more funding from notably from energy and agricultural sector for the benefit of water and environment which are typically underfunded so before concluding, I'd just like to thank again GWP Med, which has been the key partner for on Nexus activities, particularly in the Balkans, but uh, but also in uh, in, uh, in North Africa. So thank you very much again for for uh, for all of this, and uh, I'd like to invite you to the meeting of the parties. Um, so see all of you hopefully there. I will put some more information in the chat, and uh, wish you all a great discussion today. Lucia, thank you. Uh, actually, the, uh, the side event is organized by Global Water Policy that has been working with Nexus, not only in the Mediterranean, but also in, uh, in Africa with, uh, with great results. Uh, hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? Uh, the means that is in the artillery of uh, the global freshwater community in terms of uh, promoting integrated natural resource management and transboundary cooperation as well. Thank you for this. Uh, now, if, uh, we have a recorded message from uh, Mr. Hamid, the Executive Secretary of the Niger Basin Authority, uh, as keynote address to this site of it. James, over to you. Au nom de l'autorité des bassins du Niger, j'ai le plaisir de vous adresser euh, lors de cette séance importante sur le Nexus Eau, sécurité alimentaire, énergie, euh, écosystème, opérationnalisation des solutions, renforcer la coopération transfrontalière. Au cours de la 9e réunion, des parties à la Convention sur l'eau. Avant tout, je voudrais remercier le Partenariat global de l'eau et les CNU pour l'organisation de la séance. L'accès à l'eau, aux aliments et à l'énergie sont des droits humains fondamentaux. Toute personne, pour avoir une vie digne, et active dans la société a besoin de sécurité d'accès à certains biens fondamentaux. Et cela concerne surtout les populations les plus vulnérables qui dépendent directement des ressources naturelles pour leur survie. Mais pour assurer ces sécurités, on fait suivant appel aux mêmes ressources, eau pour l'énergie et l'agriculture, l'énergie pour le pompage et la transformation des aliments, ou encore le sol pour l'élevage, l'agriculture ou le central d'énergie. Ces interconnexions entre les secteurs créent la nécessité et d'une approche que nous appelons Nuxus, 
le lien inextricable entre l'eau, l'agriculture et l'énergie. La veine couvre une zone géographique de plus en plus touchée par les conflits. Cela rend très difficile certaines missions de la veine, comme par exemple le suivi hydrologique. En outre, les habitants du bassin sont de plus en plus exposés à des événements climatiques extrêmes, de longues périodes de sécheresse d'une part et de fortes précipitations accompagnées d'inondations d'autre part. Toutefois, ces défis pour l'individu constituent également une opportunité pour la communauté, pour la veine, c'est l'opportunité d'être un prometteur de paix et de continuer à prévoir des potentielles tensions entre ces États membres autour de ressources naturelles. Dans une période où de plus en plus des défis et des conflits apparaissent ou s'aggravent autour de ressources naturelles comme l'eau ou la terre, et nos coopérations approfondies est fondamentale. Et la BN y joue pleinement son rôle. Mesdames et Messieurs, la BN s'est engagée dans l'approche Nexus depuis 2011 à la conférence Nexus à Bonn, en Allemagne, et depuis 2018, nous, nous intégrons l'approche Nexus dans notre planning opérationnel à l'ABN avec le soutien d'un coût financement de l'Union européenne et de l'Allemagne. Face aux multiples défis liés à sa mission, l'ABN s'est doté d'un important dispositif institutionnel qui est en train de s'adapter aux exigences d'un développement intégré et durable de son bassin. Ainsi, animé par le souci d'un partage équitable des bénéfices liés à l'eau sur l'ensemble des bassins et la recherche du juste équilibre entre le développement et son impact sur le milieu. Les chefs d'État et du gouvernement de l'ABN au cours de leur septième sommet en février 2002, à Abuja, ont décidé qu'elle soit élaborée une vision claire et partagée avec un plan d'action de développement durable à l'horizon 2025, assorti d'un programme d'investissement accepté par tous et un mécanisme institutionnel réglementaire et juridique pour leur mise en œuvre. La vision partagée contient une approche Nexus à son cœur. Elle prévoit de faire des bassins de Niger un espace commun de développement durable par la gestion intégrée des ressources en eau et des écosystèmes associés pour l'amélioration des, des conditions de vie et la prospérité des populations à l'horizon 2025. Mesdames et Messieurs, quel est le potentiel d'utilisation de l'approche Nexus dans une coopération inter trans transfrontalière Pour améliorer l'efficacité des activités de coopérationnelle et atteindre plusieurs objectifs par le biais de nos seules interventions, il est évident qu'il faut éviter de nuire à certains objectifs de la vision commune en tenant compte des compromis potentiels et des impacts intersectoriels négatifs d'autres activités de plan. C'est pour cela que l'ABN, avec l'appui des partenaires techniques et financiers, s'engage à institutionnaliser l'approche Nexus Eau, Énergie, Sécurité Alimentaire afin d'accroître l'impact des activités des plans opérationnels en renforçant les liens positifs et intersectoriels. En outre, le défi majeur auquel les États membres de l'ABN et l'ABN s'attellent 
est la mobilisation des financements nécessaires à la mise en œuvre des actions concertées au bénéfice des populations des bassins. D'où le besoin d'appui financier pour permettre à l'ABEN de mettre en œuvre son plan opérationnel et stratégique, qui reste l'outil de planification des projets prioritaires des États membres pour les dix prochaines années. Je vous remercie pour votre aimable attention. Thank you very much to the Executive Secretary of the Niger Basin Authority for uh, his address on the WEF Nexus. And very interesting to see that um, NBA has really worked on institutionalizing the WEF Nexus approach for quite a few years now and really sees this as a key, key framework for sustainable management and development of its basin. Um, we'd now, now like to come to the second part of our meeting, which is about sharing and learning um, from the experience of five distinguished practitioners with us today. The way we will organize this is that we will first hear short pitches from each practitioner about their experience, what it is that they want to convey. And we will then have the possibility to go in breakout rooms where the speakers will be. Um, to learn more about the stories. And in these breakout rooms also, the participants and the speakers will be able to engage and exchange. Um, so the practitioners today are sharing with us their experiences on applying a nexus approach in transboundary contexts and what they have learned. And um, I will share my screen. Um, sorry. This is coming because uh, we have also the short slides from our practitioners. Sorry. Okay. And I would now like to hand over to Cesar Carmona Moreno, who is team leader of water management in developing countries from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission to explain to us what it is that he was sharing today. Cesar. Cesar. I think you are muted, Cesar. Ah, okay. Est-ce que c'est bon maintenant? Vous m'entendez? Oui? Yes. Ok, bonjour euh, à tous, euh, bonjour euh, Julienne et merci beaucoup pour cette introduction. Donc euh, aujourd'hui, nous souhaiterons partager avec vous notre expérience donc des, des, sur la, les dialogues UF et Nexus. Et donc euh, c'est une approche que nous souhaitons est très pragmatique et très effective. Donc, euh, et nous avons eu l'opportunité de travailler sur, sur le micro, mais également sur le Sénégal ainsi que dans d'autres eh, bassins eh, versants eh, en Afrique. Bon, ça va dépendre un peu du temps qu'on qu aura, mais eh, principalement, on va se focaliser sur, sur les aspects des, du micro et la manière dont eh, nous souhaitons que eh, ces dialogues aient un objectif concret et de manière à, comme l'a dit eh, le secrétaire exécutif de l'ABN, arriver à des documents stratégiques, à des programmes de mesures, à des plans de s'investissement, mais également eh, à des projets, à la définition ou à l'identification des projets eh, d'intervention. Donc, on va partager avec vous eh, cette expérience. Donc, eh, les leçons eh, apprises dans, pendant ces derniers dix eh, ans et eh, les éléments que, d'après nous, il faut eh, prendre en compte de manière à obtenir euh, une réussite, de manière à que ces euh, UF et Nexus Dialogues, ces dialogues Nexus, soient eh, une réussite. Voilà, donc je compte sur vous et bienvenue sur, sur notre espace. Thank you very much, César. Voilà. Donc very... ici, vous avez de la documentation, si vous souhaitez par la suite les, les consulter. Merci. Merci, Julien. Thank you very much, César. And yes, we will share the presentation with all participants after this meeting. 
Um, now I would like to hand over to Musa Ibrahim of the Nexus Niger Basin um, Authority. He's technical advisor for the dialogue implemented by GIZ. Musa. You also need to mute yourself. Thank you, uh, Julian. <coughs> Bonjour à tous. Uh, uh, bienvenue vraiment à ce partage par rapport au Nexus, aux énergies et sécurité alimentaire et écosystème dans le cadre de la gestion des bassins transfrontaliers. Uh, uh, comme vous l'avez suivi à travers uh, l'interlocution du secrétaire exécutif de l'ABN, uh, nous avons travaillé beaucoup plus dans le cadre de la première phase de mise en place de ce programme au niveau de l'ABN, notamment euh, dans le cadre de l'institutionnalisation de l'approche Nexus. Donc, nous allons, dans ce que nous, avons, nous allons partager avec vous, essayer de vous faire part de comment est-ce que ce processus d'institutionnalisation de l'approche Nexus est en train d'être fait au niveau de l'ABN, mais également aussi, nous allons essayer de parler d'un certain nombre de documents stratégiques que l'ABN a à son sein, qui permettent vraiment de mieux gérer euh, le bassin de manière durable tout en garantissant euh, l'épanouissement des conditions de vie au niveau de, euh, de, de ce bassin de, de, du Niger. Mais également aussi, nous avons essayé, voulu euh, raconter une, une histoire sur l'intégration de la broche Nexus, notamment en lien avec euh, le barrage euh, multifonction au niveau du Cameroun qui, qui se nomme le barrage de Lacdo dans lequel nous sommes en train de travailler avec les acteurs au niveau euh, local, mais également au niveau régional, en vue vraiment de l'appropriation et de l'intégration de cette approche Nexus dans la gestion transfrontalière de ce bassin, de, euh, de, de ce barrage de Lacdo. Donc, euh, euh, merci beaucoup et euh, on se dit euh, à, à tantôt dans le cadre de développement de tous ces thèmes que nous aurons à parcourir avec vous. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Moussa. Very interesting. And now we're going to the Balkans, uh, Southeast Europe, with uh, Tassos Klumidas, who is Senior Program Officer at the Global Water Partnership Mediterranean. Tassos, what do you want to tell us about today? Yes, thank you, Julien. Good afternoon to everybody. So later on in the breakout group, I will be, uh, let's say, presenting the experience of uh, GWP Med uh, from its nexus activities in the Western Balkans or in the Southeast Europe, as we call it, primarily through uh, related project funded by the Austrian Development Agency, uh, without many spoilers. Uh, that the Southeast Europe region is very relevant uh, uh, for uh, an adoption of a Nexus approach given its uh, natural resources as well as uh, international political processes uh, that um, going beyond the traditional, let's say, water-focused approach, it is uh, quite important and critical in the region to engage the energy and more specifically the electricity uh, sector. And I will also be speaking in more detail on the experience of uh, our activities in two transboundary basins in the Southeast Europe, namely the Dreen River Basin, shared by North Macedonia, Albania, Kosovo and Montenegro, and then the Drina River Basin, shared by Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia, and the related uh, challenges in, uh, in those areas and the nexus interlinkages that we have been exploring always in coordination with uh, institutional and political uh, frameworks in each of these cases. Thank you. Thank you, Tassos. Uh, so yeah, quite a different and complementary perspectives. And now I would like to invite uh, Jidan Bromberg for yet another approach to this uh, WEF nexus and transboundary question. Jidan, is the co-director of Ecopis Middle East um, in Israel. And so we'll talk about uh, Middle East uh, challenges. Jidan. Uh, thank you, Julian. I'm very excited to present uh, the water food energy nexus uh, approach that Ecopis uh, Middle East is uh, proposing. And it's very much based on 
uh, the comparative advantages of our different countries. Um, we'll be looking at the comparative advantage of Jordan uh, because of its vast desert areas to produce renewable energy, not only for her own needs, but also to sell uh, to the electricity grids of Israel and Palestine and to utilize that uh, renewable uh, energy to desalinate both on the Israeli and Palestinian uh, uh, Mediterranean coast uh, for both Palestinian and Israeli needs, but also to sell back uh, to Jordan. And in the process of selling water back, we have the opportunity to rehabilitate perhaps um, uh, uh, perhaps the most famous river on, uh, in the world, the, the River Jordan, and uh, through that um, uh, also uh, help uh, advance sustainable uh, development and sustainable food production uh, uh, along the Jordan Valley. So this is truly an, uh, a civil society uh, approach that has attracted uh, our own governments, uh, governments broader afield, and no, no less important, the private sector. Uh, so I'm excited to, uh, to present um, uh, this uh, uh, proposition of a, uh, a water food energy exchange that would help advance uh, both climate mitigation, climate adaptation, and peace in our troubled part of the world. Thank you so much. And yes, the executive secretary of NBA has also brought in this uh, conflict and peace dimension, which is definitely very important in, in many regions of the world, unfortunately. Um, last but not least, Hastings Chibouye, who is program manager for the Zambezi Water Information System at the Zambezi Water Schools Commission, will also be Uh, thank you, Julian. <clears throat> um, I would like to share um, the experience that we've had uh, in the Zambezi water course. Uh, the Zambezi water course basically shared by eight countries, um, Angola, Botswana, Malawi, Namibia, Mozambique, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Uh, it's an area extending for about 1.37 uh, million square kilometers. And um, the river itself that drains the, the water course, it's about 2.7 kilometers. Um, so what I would like to share is the, the, the case of developing the, the strategic plan, of course, looking at the water, energy, and food nexus. Um, I would like to take you through how the, the plan was developed in terms of ensuring that uh, there's joint planning for the benefit of all the eight countries, and also to realize uh, basically the, the benefits of uh, this particular approach, which brings in all the stakeholders, all the issues uh, to ensure that we have water security, energy security, and of course, uh, food security, not forgetting the environmental sustainability. So um, I will try and expand on these aspects, uh, I think during the breakaway uh, session. Thank you. Thank you very much to the speakers for these very interesting overviews. We will shortly open the breakouts. Before doing so, may I check very quickly with Musa, Musa Ibrahim, if you prefer to have your breakout in French or in English, because I think we'll have one breakout with conversations in French and the others will be in English. I can have it in English, no problem. Okay, thank you very much. So the breakouts will be in English, except for the breakout with César uh, from the Joint Research Center, which will be in French. So we have one, one room accommodating um, the Francophone speakers and then the rest uh, for Anglophone who are majority today. Um, so now we are opening the breakout groups if our tech host can do so. Um, thank you. And uh, the speakers will be in different rooms you will see uh, the names of the rooms. Uh, so what you can do is that you can choose whichever breakout room you want to join. You should use the button of the uh, the button of the bottom of your screen to do so. If you are not managing to join a room, we will assign you to one. Um, if some breakouts are too crowded, we might reassign some of you to a different breakout. So thanks for your understanding on this. 
So I can see, um, welcome back to all. We're giving a couple of seconds for all participants to come back to the main room. I think we're doing quite well right now. Um, thank you. I was uh, in the room with uh, Tassos learning about the Balkans. Very interesting to me, and I hope it was also interesting for all the participants. Um, now, we're going to share some extremely brief feedback from these breakout discussions by asking the facilitators in each room to share one or two highlights uh, from the discussions that took place. Very, very briefly, one minute, if you can make it, it would be great. Again, this is just a very short feedback. Um, starting with Laurent Charles. Thank you, Julien. Uh, yes, so we had the pleasure to hear from Dr. Moussa Ibrahim from the Nile Basin Authority, uh, who presented to us uh, their operational plan, which is uh, really anchored in the, uh, in the Nexus approach um, and has 350 different actions across nine different countries. Each of these actions are um, regarding one specific uh, area of intervention, so food, energy, tourism, and, and, uh, and other aspects of, uh, of the Nexus approach. And they've developed what is called the Nexus Impact Assessment Toolkit as a way of uh, selecting these different um, actions and also of modeling the basin and environmental flows across the basin and looking at their cost benefits. Um, so over to you, Shia. Thank you, very interesting. And if uh, there's information that can be shared on the toolkit, Musa, we would be happy to circulate it to all participants to this meeting. Now I'm handing over to Samha for her to share some feedback as well. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Uh, we had the pleasure to listen to Cesar Carmona Morena, the team leader of water management in developing countries of the European Commission um, Joint Research Center. So we heard about a case uh, on the Mekru uh, transboundary river basin, which is shared by Bena, Burkina Faso and Niger. And some of the lessons learned really um, for to, to, um, to have a, a transboundary dialogue and also successful kind of nexus approach that is grounded um, is, is um, include really um, the need to, to prioritize on actions that have a joint kind of um, political will um, between countries. So really um, to have um, agreement on certain priorities where actions are needed and to have a joint, joint agreement between countries is extremely um, um, important. And also to ground this with, really with data, with, with successful cases, because only with, with, with the data available actually then also um, really informed decisions can be made. Um, we had a very interesting discussion with many more points, but I'm going to restrict myself to these. Thank you, Julian. Thank, thank you. We don't have time to go in, in uh, the details today, unfortunately. Um, now I would like to hear back from uh, Anna from the discussion with Tassos on the Balkans. Thank you very much. Yes, we had a pleasure to learn from Mr. Tassos Kremidas on the Nexus Southeast Europe or Balkan uh, project. Uh, here, some of the key points were that uh, electricity sector has a special and very large weight in the policy making, not necessarily taking into interest other sectors while planning and implementing activities on the water sector. And therefore, the nexus um, potential is to bring the stakeholder into uh, development policies and sustainable development, calling for more integrated and coordinated approach. Uh, one more key point that was raised is uh, the level of understanding of different uh, stakeholders that are involved. And here the Nexus uh, does offer uh, the improved understanding and awareness raising on the approaches of uh, cross-sectoral uh, cross planning and implementation. However, the challenging of demonstrating these are high, uh, yet the this project is offering uh, six new project proposals that are coming out of the uh, cross-sectoral uh, and uh, multi-sectoral cooperation and uh, also the assessment findings that have been done under the project to continue working on the Nexus approach further. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think this speaks for you also to some points that Yusha was making in introduction about how over the years we've 
moved from working on wealth nexus assessments to looking at actions, solutions, and that's the really the dynamic also in uh, Niger Basin that we heard about. I would li now like to invite Yumiko um, to report, report back on her group. Thank you very much. So my group had a pleasure to listen to Mr. Hastings Chibuye from the Ambezi Water Courses Commission on his experiences working with the uh, WEF uh, Nexus approach in this basin with the eight uh, riparians. And uh, the, um, he has, uh, we have heard about this uh, quite comprehensive process, how they went through starting from doing an inception to really like doing a situation analysis, uh, then doing some um, inventory analysis, uh, of including the infrastructure, then developing a scenario quite a number of scenarios, then coming down to selecting that and that all that process, then also involving the stakeholder engagement. And uh, one of the examples he showed us was to also, for example, to coming to agree on the flow, the environmental flow to maintain the delta uh, downstream, for example. And all of this then was then turned into, feeding into the strategic plan of the Zambezi River. So it's quite a comprehensive approach and really using this uh, uh, next approach to be integrated into this overall basin development strategy plan, which was very interesting to hear. And, and all of this was also very much backed by the political lead. And this is one of the reasons why they could actually manage to really have this process integrated into this, this, this basin development planning uh, process. So in a nutshell, that was the summary. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting to hear about. Um, last but not least, I'd like to invite Dejan to talk about uh, the project from Ecopis Middle East. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you especially to Mr. Gidon for a really excellent presentation. And um, uh, it, it was exceptional because it comes from the sensitive area for many as aspects, including climate aspects. And uh, what, what, what we can say that uh, it's very important and we, taking their experience uh, into consideration is that uh, there is a need to build a region-wide climate resilience for, to ensure water and, uh, and food security, especially in the areas that are uh, dealing with the water scarcity also and the, with the problem with the, uh, with, the, with the climate, which can happen in any of the other areas in the, in the world, uh, having in mind the climate scenarios. And uh, we also learned that uh, uh, the, the, the process of, of desalinization, I mean, of, of the water uh, can lead to the solving of the water issues. And uh, especially, they can lead to the to the peace deal dialogue, dialogue in the uh, political sensitive sensitive areas. And uh, the third thing uh, that we discussed it was that uh, it's uh, all these um, investments are very uh, attractive to the to the private sector. And uh, uh, even we heard that there is no uh, need of donor assistance because private spider sector is very active and uh, although there are different financial capacities of different sites in the regions uh, and different advantages uh, the, the 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 all uh, using the, the nexus approach can lead to the to the uh, political let's say and uh, and the climate stability thank you so much and very interesting to end on that note uh, that part of the session because yes it's another dimension that we haven't really talked about yet today Defin the question definitely. of the role of the private sector thank you so much thanks to all our facilitators and uh, now we will actually have some time luckily to come back to our speakers and learn more from them through a panel discussion i'm handing over to dimitris to facilitate that discussion Seems that Dimitris is muted. Thank you, Julien. I have been having some problems with my network. Uh, we are right on time, so I would like to invite our storytellers to this, to this virtual panel. Um, uh, first, uh, Cesar, uh, the work you have been working in. Uh, in the in Africa, JRC has been working in, the, in Africa for long. Mr. Moreno, hmm? Cesar Moreno. To what extent Nexus related numerical modeling that associate trade offs or indicate co benefits have the power to unlock potential for transboundary cooperation? 
Oui. Et, euh, en fait, euh, nous sommes en train de développer euh, donc un outil qui intègre différentes, euh, différents modèles, donc euh, des modèles des de changements climatiques, des variabilités climatiques, et hydrologiques, agriculture, énergie, etc. Bon, donc en fait, euh, bon, ça c'est les développements que nous sommes en train de faire, mais th théoriquement, enfin théoriquement et pratiquement, c'est-à-dire on peut et, travailler avec n'importe quel et, modèle et qui est déjà disponible dans les bassins et versants ou dans les pays. C'est-à-dire ça c'est pas ça c'est pas un problème. Parce que et, quand on parle des Nexus et quand on parle de, de, de l'outil que nous sommes en train de, de développer, ce qui est important, donc euh, comme on, comme j'ai fait euh, lors de ma présentation, ce qui est important, c'est de mettre en place la la, la sortie des différents euh, modèles qui en fait euh, la seule chose dont ils font c'est euh, de faire une approximation de la réalité qu'il y a dans les bassins c'est-à-dire combien de ressources naturelles de quelles ressources naturelles je dispose au niveau du bassin que je dispose au niveau régional que je dispose au niveau du pays donc ça c'est l'information des bases et dont on doit euh, on compte et euh, confronter cette euh, cette information c'est-à-dire c'est la, la disponibilité de ces ressources avec les objectifs politiques c'est-à-dire que sont les objectifs de développement dont je euh, dont euh, où je veux aller hein? les objectifs dans lesquels je veux mais mais projeter euh, dans cinq ans dans dix ans dans quinze ans etc et donc euh, et là par contre il y a un modèle d'optimisation qui fait parler des différents modèles biophysiques ou socio-économiques et qui eh, permet d'arriver à des solutions euh, optimales qui seront euh, présentées aux décideurs politiques. Et donc, euh, et ça, c'est l'objectif, ça, c'est le vrai objectif de, de cette approche. Enfin, de cette approche pour ce qui concerne l'évaluation du Nexus. Hein. Il ne s'agit pas seulement des, des dialogues, il faut confronter ces dialogues avec la, la réalité euh, du terrain et la disponibilité des ressources naturelles qu'il y a sur le terrain. Et euh, avec ça, pouvoir, euh, on arrive, enfin, notre expérience, c'est qu'on arrive plus facilement à des consensus de développement. Je ne sais pas si ça répond à votre question. The, the, the discussion could be long. Let me, I do understand the, that, um, the need to have model, models appropriately scaled to reflect the reality is crucial. Nevertheless, going from science to policy, this interface is a peculiar uh, one. And when the linkages are being made with success, there may be uh, potentials for, uh, for, uh, for, in, uh, for enhanced integrated transboundary water resource management. Has it been a case that you managed with your work to explain Uh, to, to put the numbers behind the story and be able to persuade the politician or a decision maker in moving ahead, either with cooperation or uh, in a solution that uh, prior to the American modeling, they were hesitant about? Oui, effectivement. C'est-à-dire, bon, nous, nous avons été confrontés à ça et plusieurs fois. Donc, euh, il y a... Euh, attendez, parce que j'entends une traduction. Voilà, je pense que ça, ça va marcher. Donc, euh, l'idée que nous, euh, nous avons été confrontés à ce type de problématiques, dans lesquelles il y a eu, des, par exemple, des objectifs euh, qui ont été euh, proposés dans le cadre des discussions politiques et qu'ils euh, n'étaient pas euh, réalistes par rapport aux ressources disponibles. Donc, euh, il y avait, euh, par exemple, des objectifs sur le nombre de têtes de cheptel, euh, enfin des troupeaux, au niveau du, du bassin. 
Et donc, cet objectif-là, il n'était pas réaliste par rapport au, au, à la réalité du terrain, c'est-à-dire aux ressources disponibles. Par exemple, on n'aurait pas pu alimenter, on aurait dû dédier des champs agricoles à alimenter les cheptels. Et donc ça, c est, c est, on a montré, eh, on a mis sur la table cette réalité du terrain. Et effectivement, eh, ces objectifs ont été revus à la, à la baisse de manière à pouvoir eh, être cohérents effectivement avec les, la, la, les ressources disponibles. Donc, je suis en train de parler euh, du cheftel, par exemple, mais il y avait également euh, des objectifs, par exemple, euh, sur l'expansion des terres agricoles qui n'étaient pas cohérentes avec les, euh, la, la disponibilité des terres et la, euh, à l'intérieur du bassin. Bon, ça, ce sont des cas extrêmes, mais il y a eu qui, qui montre, qui illustre euh, de manière très claire quelles sont la oui, manière dont on répond. Mais il y a d'autres cas, effectivement, qui sont un peu moins évidents, mais qui permettent également de, de, de montrer ces types de... Ceci dit, ceci dit la, les, euh, les objectifs, c'est-à-dire les, les solutions euh, scientifiques et techniques qu'on propose, ce sont un parmi l'ensemble d'éléments que euh, les décideurs politiques tiennent en compte. Donc, euh, la solution scientifique ou technique ne va pas s'imposer euh, aux discussions politiques, aux objectifs politiques. Ça, oui, dites-moi. Uh, what my, my, my takeaway from your intervention is that uh, policy dialogues coupled with with American modeling assist in putting in scale the solutions so as to render, render them realistic and, uh, and uh, enable the decisions by the policy makers. Mr. Tsibouye, to you, Zabezi, what are the novel elements that the water, energy, food, ecosystem, Nexus approach brings in when it comes to transboundary water resource management? Ah, thank you so much. Two, two three minutes, uh, please, because we don't have much time. In there. Okay. Like, Based on, uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the elements are just quite a few. First and foremost, uh, because the whole, the whole approach is centered on stakeholder dialogues. Uh, so it's very important that uh, all the stakeholders actually have a say, uh, especially when it comes to transboundary road resources management because what you want to do is to ensure that we have the buy-in and the acceptance uh, of, of whatever you agree uh, in moving forward. Uh, the other element is to looking at, uh, do you have the enough evidence in terms of um, data and information that will then help decision makers to try and look at how to manage the trade-offs if they are, they, are, they are there, and also to try and capitalize on the synergies that come out of Uh, these approaches. So it's very important to have uh, evidence-based uh, support to the whole process. Um, I think the other elements looking at what are the various response options in terms of um, uh, what policies then do we need to, or rather what will influence policies if there are any changes, looking at the water governance and also looking at the investments that then you agree. So all these response options are coming out of these dialogues and also the evidence that's coming out, coming into the whole process so that you ensure that your development pathways uh, will give you the desired resilient future, they say. Uh, I think those are the main elements that uh, support the whole processes of this Nexus. Thank you. Unfortunately, I think you are you're muted. Hello? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. So uh, in addition to the, uh, to the science that we touched upon previously, the fact that we have a structured multi-stakeholder process 
is uh, is the novelty, if I may say so, or that that will guarantee that all views are being taken into consideration and we have a reality check and then acceptance at the end of the solutions. I, I would go then to uh, now to Mr. Uh, Ibrahim, Niger based Nexus Project, GIZ. In the case of uh, now we're going to the solutions. In the case of Niger, cooperation is enabled by the need to work together for management solutions, including investments. So to ameliorate the livelihoods in the pirates and investments. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Dimasti, for the uh, question. Yes, uh, related to uh, uh, the uh, next approach, what can it can give? In prioritizing, in prioritizing the uh, actions related to the investment is, uh, we all know that in general, uh, when we are talking about uh, investment, um, uh, maybe sometimes related to food security uh, objectives, we are uh, we are not considering all those other uh, sectors, namely uh, energy and. Uh, uh, others most of the time we are considering them as uh, neutral as zero and uh, what next now is doing is uh, we need to uh, to to do a kind of high high prioritizing of uh, multisectoral project and this by analysis the impact of next uh, solution related to the action that will be taken on and that to our projects which can lead by institution and uh, which can be uh, uh, several uh, sectors. We need to give uh, priority to where we have the challenge to support several objectives simultaneously. So that's why most of the time, uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, advanced in the advising that we are giving to the Niger Authority is now uh, to help them and uh, uh, normally look at the action that have high impact of nexus and also to help them now in how to now do a kind of feasibility uh, uh, um, development of action so that it can be more attractive to the investment so that it can be easily to have investment for the implementation of uh, of this uh, activity so this is that why we have this near and nexus impact assessment tools and which has a lot of criteria inside uh, uh, it was uh, for some regional uh, actions which are mainly related to the construction of uh, uh, hydropower dams we need also to involve the modeling aspect in those criteria selection so that we can prioritize which are the uh, most uh, uh, priority action and how this investment can be uh, mainly uh, be sure that we can achieve this uh, investment because when we can ensure the investor that this action cannot have impact negatively to uh, such uh, such sectors so uh, this will be easily for the investor to be willing to uh, uh, to invest in such kind of action so this is what i can say as insights related to your question thank you so WEF, the, the, the nexus approach assists in having the WEF approved investments and prioritize political uh, decision as well as financing and with regard to financing uh, in what ways the the, uh, the the next approach has assisted you in uh, in resource mobilization? You touched upon this when in your last sentences, but has it be, has it proven really to uh, to actually assist in attracting financing or uh, easing, if I may say so, the uh, the attraction of financing for the uh, uh, to to have the, the investments financed? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh... In what we are doing is uh, we are uh, we are helping uh, the uh, our, our partner in identifying investment opportunity for multi-sectoral projects, and uh, uh, we are uh, working with uh, consultant in uh, uh, first of all for the first phase we have uh, assessed all those three hundred and fifty actions related to the uh, uh, to the operational plan of NBA. And we have come up with some uh, actions which have high score of nexus impacts. 
and now we are trying to uh, to, to give a kind of uh, 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 advice to the NBA in order to enhance all those actions so that they can be more uh, uh, efficient and effectively so that uh, this also we are, uh, we are trying now to, uh, with NBA to have a kind of uh, of round table so that we can now uh, to, uh, expose all those action and to be sure that um, or maybe some uh, investors will be willing uh, to have investment of those action and also what we are, we are doing is we are not uh, we know that uh, NBA uh, uh, most of action of NBA are public actions but we are trying to also uh, see the way of having some action which can be mainly dedicated to the private action where we can now bring in some private uh, investors so that they can uh, they can they, they can invest in such kind of action because when we are talking about actions related to the to having fishing uh, 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 activities uh, where we can with, in such way we can have a, a, a something that we can link it to the private where we uh, we, are, we will be sure that private will be attracted by such kind of activity so that's why uh, even uh, in the lagdo case that was i was talking we know that uh, lagdo uh, is a multi-purpose dam and we have a lot of activities related to the irrigation but also related to the fishing and we are now trying to see how we can now uh, 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 enhance the production and also how we can attract uh, 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 investors related to the uh, 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 the uh, transformation of all those uh, products that can be come out from and also related to the development of uh, uh, irrigation schemes and everything so that we can have uh, because the potential is there and we need to uh, to have some good project so that it can be uh, uh, sell to the investors so thank you thank you mr Wazir. Very interesting. Uh, Mr. Kromida, the drinks process has been a long-standing one, and there have been a number of activities. Uh, what is the added value that Nexus has brought in a drink basin cooperation? In, in two, three minutes, please. Can you please, James, can you please unmute Mr. Kromida? That's why you're still muted. Sorry, yes, apologies. Uh, from the beginning, we have taken all efforts to uh, ensure coordination with the existing political and institutional framework in the Dream River Basin. For example, the, uh, the related thematic report under the TDA in the Basin fed into the development of the assessment, while uh, the assessment itself uh, captured synergies with the two other uh, relevant initiatives in the Basin while contributing to the strategic action program. Uh, now, if I would have to, let's say, select the added value from this um, experience, I would say that it is the, the engagement or at least the initiation of the engagement of the electricity sector and uh, the power utilities, recalling, for example, that in the transboundary uh, coordinating body, it comprises of representatives of water and uh, environment authorities without uh, representation from uh, the energy sector. So I think that in the medium term and uh, with the perspective of a transboundary river basin management plan, uh, I think this can be, let's say, enhanced. And the second, let's say, value added is that uh, uh, with a nexus approach, we can ensure or expect to ensure additional sources of financing. All uh, financing instruments, all financing sources, increasingly want to see coordinated and cross-sectoral approaches uh, rather than you know, traditional sectoral silos. So a nexus approach, I think, can uh, unlock additional sources and instruments. Thank you. Thank you, Tasso. Very interesting. So it is creating windows uh, of, uh, or entry points for other sectors to be in, uh, sectors that are traditionally excluded or reluctant to participate in water resource management, even more transboundary water resource management. Mr. Bromberg, Middle East, Middle East, there are a number of reasons related to political and climatic realities that make transboundary cooperation for water resource management challenging. 
And one of the specs of uh, the next chapter is that we can indicate co-benefits, promote cooperation. To what extent this is true for me, at least? So, so cooperation indeed has been uh, extremely challenging um, on anything in the Middle East, um, not only in the Israeli-Palestinian sphere, but in the broader sphere um, with, with lots of uh, uh, conflicts uh, throughout our, our region. Um, we are the most water scarce part of the world, uh, uh, the MENA, uh, the Middle East, North Africa uh, region. And when we look at the climate crisis, um, uh, we're a hotspot. You know, we're, we're expecting uh, uh, four to seven degree Celsius increase in temperatures um, by the end of the century, a 40% further reduction in precipitation. And that, that now uh, is going to either lead to more conflict as a threat multiplier, but we believe because it's a common threat to the region as a whole, it could equally lead to greater cooperation because failing to cooperate will lead to failed states, more failed states in our region, which threaten the national uh, uh, stability of the broader region as a whole. And, and I would also argue uh, uh, particularly uh, Europe which has already seen massive floods of uh, climate refugees and conflict uh, refugees um, just, in these, just in this last decade. Um, so so uh, the water energy uh, nexus approach that we've proposed as part of uh, what we called a green blue deal for the Middle East um, uh, uh, really sees uh, the climate crisis as an entry point for cooperation by utilizing the comparative advantages of coastal states to desalinate, as I mentioned, and hinterland states to produce uh, renewable energy and exchange and sell uh, to one another. And uh, as a civil society organization, we're heavily involved in creating the political will. And we've, we've noted that because of the development in technologies, both of renewables and of desalination, the private sector um, is a powerful mechanism of creating that political will because the private sector sees opportunities and can only benefit from those opportunities if governments start to cooperate. Thank you. We are right on time, 4.29. Uh, I wish we had a full day. Julien and, and uh, Lucia, we need to promise each other that we have this interesting panel in, uh, in, in, in discussing at least, uh, at least two, three hours so we can grasp the details and the experiences. And we need to do this in the, in the near future under the umbrella of the UNEC Water Convention. Now, back to you, Julian. We have the uh, mission impossible to finish in 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody who joined today, the participants or speakers, the facilitators, and also the interpreters who supported this session. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting with different perspectives, which I appreciated from river basin organizations, from partner organizations, more from the research and academic side with GRC. Um, and talking about different contexts and different ways in which the WEF Nexus is being applied and has been applied in the past. So a lot of food for thought. Um, thank you so much for all the information shared. We will share the links who have been which have been put in the chat with the participants to the session and also the short presentation, which will give you an overview of the topics discussed today. Um, so wishing you all the very best on your continued journey uh, towards natural resources management and wealth nexus sectors management. Um, and yeah, hope to see some of you at the uh, meeting of the parties of the convention as well. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, toutes les personnes qui nous ont rejoints aujourd'hui.